Welcome to the Raw and Real of Real Estate podcast, powered by LPT Realty, real estate reimagined, with your host, the one and only Betsy Tinnerbin. On this podcast, we bring you people who share their personal journeys in life, business, and of course, real estate. Get motivated, inspired, and priceless information from entrepreneurs, community leaders, and realtors who are thriving. Now let's get raw and real. Here's Betsy. Welcome back to the LPT All-Star Radio Show. I am your host, Betsy Tenervin with LPT Realty and the Sunshine State Investments team. And I have the hot to trot squad in the studio today. And little do they know, we are not only going to talk the raw and real of life, business, and of course, real estate. But the theme for today is all about character, my friends. So we are going to apply character to life. We're going to apply character to business. And we're definitely going to apply character to real estate. Because as we all know, with the up and down market and all the crazy things that we have going on, it is a whirlwind out there. So we are happy to be in the studio. I have two amazing realtors and someone that you all have heard before to bring us more gems from the business perspective. So Tony Sicaro, super happy to have this guy here. Like crazy stories, as we all know that I'm super raw and real. I hustled this guy for a year, man. Like, please like come over, like go here, go there. And back when I was with my old brokerage, I tried to get him there and then at us at a nowhere tony popped up he's literally been in the industry for like eight years he is a fire real estate agent he just joined lpt so tony we are super excited to have you with us excited to be here thank you yeah i'm just it's been awesome to just connect with you and i'm so glad that we like finally connected and that you've come over to lpt i know that you've done some amazing things in your career so we'll definitely get into that during the show oh boy okay great <laughs> And another guy that that I always try to, you know, blend people together during these shows. And this other guy actually hit me up and said, yo, I'm kind of thinking about like getting on a team. And he was with LP team. He has a perfect radio voice, has done some podcasting. So he will be a special treat for you today. But he actually was in the software sales industry for over a decade. So he's really good at sales, super amazing personality, just jumped into the real estate career. And that is Mr. Peter Carr. What's going on, Peter? Not much. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm super thrilled that I've just got to be around you. Your personality is literally just kind of like a bright light. So you're always smiling and just giving, you know, your opinion in the raw and real format. So we'll definitely talk about that later in the show. Sounds good. And then this guy that everyone knows, he's been on the show before, owns Apex Plumbing. He literally has like grown out this plumbing business. He also speaks on our invest tour. Mr. Joe Pinker, what's going on? How you doing? I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I'm super excited to have you back because I feel like so many things have happened in your business since you last spoke to everyone on the radio show. So we're definitely going to dive deep with the listeners on just kind of your growth and talk a little bit about struggle and what that's like as a business owner today. <laughs> Sounds good. You got some words of wisdom? <laughs> <laughs> if you have them, tell me about them. No, it's, it's, been a, it's been a pretty tough, tough go the last few months, just seeing people grow and investing in other people and giving them the opportunity to mess up and grow themselves. So it definitely wears on you when you're going through that, but there's nothing better and more satisfying when you get to the other end of it. So I just think we're at a little bit of a dip here. And I think that you're doing some great things. I, I know that you just finished your real estate piece. We love to have people on the show that can throw in their real estate aspects. So we definitely know Joe has dove into the real estate investing. How's that going, Joe? It's awesome. But absolutely, when you're on the other end and you're the investor, instead of just the plumber, seeing when a wall comes down, what's behind that wall. So I seen that on my first, I actually flipped a home and I turned it into a, it's going to be a halfway house to, of course, give back to, I've been freely given to, so I'm freely giving back to, I'm trying to give back to people that need a second chance at life. So, but I didn't cut any corners. I wanted to make sure it was a nice home for these people to call home and be able to cook on a nice stove and eat on nice plates and watch a nice TV and sit on a nice sofa. I mean, I think that's very important when you're first in recovery because a lot of people are coming off the street, you know, and they haven't felt a nice, comfortable thing to sit on in a long time. So it's been very gratifying, but throughout the process of buying it, you always question yourself whether you made a good investment or not. And every wall that comes down, you're like, eh, did I really make a good investment? But it turned out good. And I'm happy. And I just finished my first home. There's three of them that I'm going to be doing. 
when I just finished the first one, we just moved the first two people in. So awesome. I, mean, I love that. Yeah, and and just so everyone knows, what Joe is basically doing is he's purchasing properties, he's renovating them, and then he is giving people fresh out of treatment centers a place to live, and he's creating a house manager that's going to supervise. Everyone in the house is attending a program for AANA. They're also attending a local like church group, and then they're also being drug tested. So there's a big accountability piece there for these people, but he also is profiting very well. I believe that off of one of the properties, you know, normal rent would probably be like 2600 and you're collecting about 5200 Yeah, 5200 So there's, yeah, there's two beds to room. The two house managers, only, I charge them 400 per bed and they stay in the same room. And then the other six beds are $800 a piece. So yeah, it's bringing about 5200 bucks instead of the 26 which is good because now I can invest and help more people. So I love that. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it, yes. So that's why Tony and Peter come into play in everyone's world, because if you are looking to structure an investment real estate deal, these two guys can definitely help you with that. And so with that being said, the kickoff of the show today is going to be on character. And throughout the show, we're going to talk about four different things, self-management, authenticity, humility, and courage. And so I'm glad that Joe kicked off with the self-management because that's super critical in life and in business and in doing something like real estate investing and creating passive income for your family. You're also creating some self-management for some other people. So, Tony, let's talk about self-management because you've been in the real estate industry eight years. How many gray hairs have you received from this industry? I'm actually pretty young. I don't have any gray hairs at all. So, you know, I'm pretty <laughs> Well, you're lucky because I was looking at the roots and I had to like dip in some root spray today and needed some extra help. Like before I got my hair done. So no gray hairs for you at all, man? Just stress. <laughs> okay, okay. So throughout real estate, you know, we we are the glue that holds everyone together. We're the catalyst. We're the connector. We have all the different moving parts. So talk a little bit about self-management. How do you manage the schedule? How do you manage self-care? What do you do in your business? I think it's important to, you know, take care of yourself, right? So I work out, get up in the morning, try to get a, work, get a workout on, get all the stress from the day before, get up and try to, you know, get that, get ready for the day and then just hit the books, go on a calendar, see what's available, start making outbound calls and hitting the, uh, hitting the books to get, get appointments. So you're pretty structured. I wouldn't say I'm greatly structured. That's why you know, I'm joining a team so I can be better structured. But I think I've been successful, you know, putting appointments on my calendar, going visit them and, and getting the business. Okay, cool. I love that. So Peter Carr, this is raw and real, bro. It's like super exposure, dog. So self-management, self-care. How would you rank yourself one to 10? One to 10. That's a good one. I like that scale. I'd say like I'm a six right now. Okay, cool. Why are you a six? I just feel like there's a lot of growth that's been going on in my life over the last few months. And I think some of that comes with just getting more involved in my church and on that side of it and just my faith journey. And so I think that's Part of it, I think coming from a sales background, yeah, you have the structured schedule, like exactly like Tony talked about of, hey, I block time and I'm good at that side of it. I just think overall there's some growth going on, you know, outside of just the business aspect of things. Yeah, it's really crazy. You know, my dad is like this business guru. He has 4,000 doors in Illinois. And every day that I ask him like, dad, like, well, how are you so successful in business? Every single time it's self-discipline self-growth like constantly working on what working on itself so i do i love to hear that though so what's something that you're really like working on right now to get from a six to a seven okay that's good so i think some of the things that i've incorporated are just kind of like morning time like devotional meditation and then working out i think that's a big thing with as an entrepreneur like there can be a lot of stressful days or there can be some downs or the valleys and the peaks and like in order to stabilize that like really working on your physical self and also working on the mental side of things. I know it's like people say to me like, hey dude, do you wanna go run on a treadmill? I'm like, dude, I wouldn't run if there was a fire. So absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> but I think you can find self care ways that you do like, right? You know, I think everything. So for me, it's always been like boxing. Like it's a great cardio workout. It's fun. It's like an aggression release. So, you know, tip and trick out there for anyone working on self care and self management. Don't make that part a painful process. Like, you don't have to do everything that you see on the media. Get up at 5 a.m. and do a 75-day hard challenge and knock out two-a-days. It's like, dude, just go walk for an hour. You know, I was reading something really cool that I want to throw out to you guys, too. There was a guy who lost, like, 100 pounds in, like, six months, and he cut calories, but he legit did 20,000 steps a day 
all he did was walk. So he did like walking for an hour in the morning, walking for 30 minutes, and then like another 30 minutes. So just throwing that out there to everyone. Remember, I always talk about the 80-20 rule. Don't just go super hard in the paint, kill yourself, make it painful. Stay in that 80-20 spectrum where like you're going to have those 20% days where, yeah, you eat a piece of cheesecake or maybe you go through a drive through and it's not the best decision, but you're a human being. Like don't persecute yourself for that. So I love all of this. Remember, Tony and Peter are both amazing real estate agents. Peter Carr, if someone wants to communicate with you in the real estate world, obviously you're going to be throughout the show. People aren't going to leave, but how could they contact you? Yeah, so I think the best way to contact me, just shoot me a text or give me a call. My number is 513-253-9150. And Mr. Tony Sacaro, if someone wants to communicate with you in regards to real estate or your new self-care plan, how could they reach you? Oh, absolutely. Same way. Text or call 813-758-3852. And Joe Pinker, we are going to dive deep with Joe today. Joe doesn't even know what is in for him. This was a last minute thing. Of course, he's amazing and always steps up to the plate, but we're definitely going to put him on a peak and test him today. So Joe Pinker at Apex Plumbing, how could someone get in touch with you? The best way to get in touch if you have a plumbing issue is 727-268-8610. Of course, if anybody ever wants to get a hold of me personally by text or phone, it's my personal phone is 813-340-9553. But if you do have an emergency or you want an appointment, please call the office because you'll get handled <laughs> much faster and with an exact time. Okay. Thank you. We love everyone out there today. Again, all about character. So four peaks, self-management, authenticity, humility, and courage. You are not going to want to miss this show. Don't forget to download the iHeartRadio app, pop in those earbuds, whether you're at work, doing laundry, or just wanting to ignore someone. Check us out for the next three episodes, and we'll be back after the commercial break. The best comp plans ever in, in stock and revenue share, but if, if we're not closing real estate transactions, all of that is worthless because ultimately everything starts with a real estate transaction, which starts with a consumer. And so we wanted to arm our agents with the absolute best technology and best marketing tools to do more real estate. And that's, again, I think a big differentiator. I think very few brokerages really sit down and say, how do we provide tools to make sure that our agents can be more productive, sell more real estate, win more listings, win at more listing appointments, help more buyers find that home. And we're very focused on that. And so while we have the best comp plans and the best ways for agents to generate wealth and earn, we also have the best tools. And more importantly, I would say have the best tools to help you be successful in real estate. Welcome back to the LPT All-Star Radio Show. I am still your host. You have not got rid of me yet. Betsy Tinnervin with LPT Realty and the Sunshine State Investments team. So happy to be here. Show is sponsored by LPT Realty. And we have exciting news this week that since I have been doing this show, we have stacked all of these episodes and we are going to be posting them in the LPT All-Star Radio Show Facebook page. So if you want to relapse and rewind on all the raw and real of life, business, and of course, real estate, all of those episodes will be available to you. If you ever do want to jump on the show and you are an LPT agent, you are, of course, always welcome. If you are a business owner contributing in the Tampa Bay community in relation to real estate, please contact me at 813-609-0229. And so super exciting week as we launch all those episodes. You know, we were beta testing some things. And of course, since the show is about character, I pride myself in producing a great quality product. And so we wanted to make sure that before this actual podcast launched on Spotify and YouTube and everywhere else that we had everything down to a fine science. So we're super excited. That's going to be coming out this week. And again, just really glad to have these people in the studio today. Tony Sicaro been in the real estate game for quite some time, almost a decade. He has just joined the forces with LPT Realty, and I know he's going to be unstoppable. I am honored to actually have him on my team. And Peter Carr, who is truly a bright light, he he doesn't know this, but, you know, we're going to be doing all this podcasting stuff. So I'm definitely going to involve him in using his radio voice. And he has just jumped into real estate, but he's been in software sales for over a decade. So he definitely has mastered that craft. Great negotiator, great sales guy. And Joe Pinkard with Apex Plumbing, been on the show before. People just absolutely adore him. He's going to speak, he spoke a little bit on some real estate investing and some other things. So we're happy to be here and talking about character. We talked a little bit about self-management. Now we're going to talk about authenticity, authenticity, authenticity. 
T. Let's pronounce that correctly. So it's going to be awesome just to hear from you guys how you adapt that in your businesses. And Tony, let's start with you. I know that I feel like the whole world of social media and advertising and even in our business that everybody just kind of tries to clone other people, right? And you see the same thing on Facebook, the same advertising pieces, but how are you kind of authentic in what you do and how you handle your clients? I think it's important just to, when you meet the clients, you know, first of all, smile and just show that, hey, you're here, you're friendly. You know, if you go into someone's home, you ask them politely, hey, do you want me to take your shoes off? And, you know, be, be, be genuine with them really talking about them and see what their goals are and always tailor to, hey, you know what? I want to help you out. Your goals are my goals. So tell me about you and tell me about yourself. Tell me how, how you want to sell your home or what your goals are. There's never a right or wrong answer, but I literally think that that was like perfect. I loved that. I really love just the factor that you're making yourself relatable to other people and making their goals your goals because that's what sales is really all about. So... Peter, I'm definitely going to come to you because I feel like how many calls a day do you get that is like either you know that it's someone like totally off base and it's a sales call and the first thing you want to do is like hang up on them and <laughs> it's just a bad situation, especially when you're into something. So I really want you to talk about how you're authentic over the phone. Like you've been in sales a very long time. Now you're in the real estate game. So when you're prospecting and you're trying to gain clients, how do you make yourself authentic over the phone? Yeah, I think, you know, the phone can be a challenge for a lot of people, right? But it's it comes into inflection, honestly, like, here, I'll move this up, but it comes into standing up, truly like when, it's just some simple tips there because you're a little bit more positive, you have more energy, you're more energetic, and that comes through genuinely. Like, I try to be 100% authentic. Like, I'm the same person here as you would see me out on a Saturday night, and I think that's, like, critically important. Like, always be the same person that you are. Don't try to be someone else don't try to be so super polished like be comfortable in your own skin and like you will attract it's like the coolest thing with social media now like what you put out there like you attract and it comes back like tenfold I love that and it's kind of like just when we are talking about like what we're eating or what we're doing like garbage in gets garbage out so I do think that we did some calls <laughs> the other day and you know it's very crazy when you are calling someone if I'm like hey Joe it's Betsy how are you versus like what's going on Joe <laughs> how you doing Joe so Joe, you and I are both like team leads and what's really hard is not only do we have to be authentic, but then we have to be authentic leaders, right? So we have to teach authenticity. We have to teach people to be authentic. So what do you do with your plumbing crew? Because how many guys do you have now? 35. Yeah, 35. Uh, okay, 35 guys. So we have 35 guys out there and then we also have office staff. Yeah. So it's about, I'm sorry, 31. I got to be authentic. I think it's 31 guys and four office staff. So. Okay, cool. So 35 people total, <laughs> yes. but we have people in the office, right? So let's start with them. They have to take all the incoming calls and then they also have to do follow-up. So how do you teach them to be authentic? It's very important to be empathetic to people. Okay, we walk into people's homes. It's flooded. There's a clog. There's there's something going on in their lives. We're either, we're there to fix their problem. It's not about us when we get there. You know, I talked to my guys about that. Be interested, not interesting. Because once you're interesting, you're talking about yourself and you're dead, right? And you stop being empathy. Repeat that, that for everyone one more time. Be interested, don't be interesting. Okay, and I, I try and practice that, you know, in all of my affairs. Anytime I'm in a communication with somebody, you know, I want to care. I want to hear about you. How's your day? How are you doing? What's your problem? How can we solve your your issue? Whatever it is, you know, I think it's very important to, it brings you a happier life, you know, because guess what? Now there's people around you that you're interested in. And guess what? They're interested in you. So now you got plumbers, right? So like these are not like polished sales guys. Like they're dirty. They're in a uniform. So we're already authentic, right? We may need more deodorant, all yes. the things, right? <laughs> very, Plus, very cool thing. Yeah, plumbers. Cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we also have a situation where like they're not supposed to be sales guys. They're not supposed to be polished. They are doing a labor job. So now how do we take these laborers and make them authentic with human yeah. beings? It's, it's, you got to earn the right. You know, I talked about earning the right when you walk into somebody's home. Okay. We don't go right into a sale. Just like when you're going and selling a home, right? You don't go right into the home. You find out why they're selling the home. Why are you selling this home? Right? What are your goals? What are your life goals? Where do you want to be in three years? You know, so, and I could change that to plumbing. Do you plan on staying here the rest of your life? Is this, you know, because that's going to determine what type of options we give them. All right. And it's, I always tell them, go directly to the issue first. Go directly to the issue first. Because people don't want you looking at their toilet if they have a hot water tank problem, right? So earn the right, show them, show them what their options are because you don't want to pin people in a corner. You want to make sure that they have options and they're making the decision. I think that's very important. I love that. And if we follow that process, I feel like you're being authentic and I feel like you're showing empathy. So 
It's a simple process. We I love that. Process. That's awesome. And so, Tony, like, what has been the biggest challenge of staying authentic in the real estate career? Mm, biggest challenge. That's a good question. Do, 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 do. Uh, I guess it's just having them listen to you and believing and not, not worrying them with questions. And, you know, when you have the sales process or you're going over like comps, sometimes if you see someone yawning, you know, it's kind of like, oh, shoot, I'm losing them. What, you know, what's, what's going on? That's what's the biggest challenge, keeping them engaged, keeping them informed of that you're here to help them out. I love that. That's great. And then Peter, obviously in a real estate transaction, we have to hold all these things together and agents are important. So anyone out there listening, if you're looking for a buyer's agent, you know, one of the things that Peter can provide to you is his new magazine on tips of how to get a low interest rate in a seller's market where interest rates are also high. So obviously if you want a magazine from Peter, he will give his cell phone out. However, with buyers right now, how do you stay authentic when every single thing is an objection? I shouldn't buy right now. Interest rates are high, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. How do you deal with that? I think that's you know a great question. And Joe like kind of hit on it too. I think you have to really empathize with people, understand where they're coming from, meet them where they are, and then also just look at Histor like history, back it up with numbers. If they're more of an analytical person or if they're more of an emotional person, try to talk to them as you would your best friend, right? Like, hey, if I'm gonna try to convince you of something, I just wanna sit down and have a conversation of, hey, I understand like that interest rates are historically high right now. Prices are historically high. Inventory is really low. I get all these things, but like, what is your true goal? Like, if you wanna own a home, like, let's get into it. You know, it's cliche as they say right now, but like date the rate, marry the home. Let's find the right home for you. And then we can work on, you know, opportunities or options you know, that are available right now for you on the financing side of that. things. I love that. Joe, if anyone wants you to look at the toilet or the hot water heater, they mm -hmm. can contact your office at what number? 727-268-8610. And if anyone wants to speak to you personally about a recovery journey and plug into that community, what's your personal number? Yeah, absolutely. You're not bothering if you ever call me. I think it's very important for me to give back to what was given to me, like I said earlier. I and mean, you can call me or text me. If you have any questions or you need any help with anything with your recovery or you're struggling, and it's 813-340-9553. And Tony Sicaro, you have this active marketing plan magazine. So if anyone wants one of those, how, how would they get in touch with you to get one of those? I would just simply call or text at 813-758-3852. And as we mentioned earlier, Peter has a prospecting buyer magazine that will teach you how to get a low interest rate in today's markets. How would they get one of those magazines, Peter? Yeah, again, so just call or text. Different area code here, but it's 513-253-9150. I'm one of the Ohio boys that moved down here, okay? I love we'll that. Just leave it at that. So we are going to continue on our character as we proceed to segment three. We're going to talk about humility a little bit and dive deep into that. We're also gonna talk about listings and sellers and this amazing listing power pack that we have. So if you are thinking about selling your home, you can contact Tony or Peter. They will come out and do that presentation for you, which is pretty fabulous. Again, check us out at LPT All-Star Facebook group. If you missed any of the segments, we're gonna take a break and you will catch us after the break. The biggest win, I think, with the dual path and having these two models is that now we become a brokerage for everyone. No matter where you are in your real estate career, or what your goals are today, maybe today you're not interested in recruiting or having a team, but then one day you wake up and you are. Well, if you're at the wrong brokerage to do that, you're locked in. Where in our model, we're not holding anyone hostage. We're not tying anyone in. You can move between the different comp plans and have that success and really achieve whatever your definition of success is under one brokerage platform being LPT. Welcome back to the LPT All-Star Radio Show. I am your host, Betsy Tenervin, with LPT Realty and the Sunshine State Investments Team. And I have a rowdy bunch in the studio today trying to get them to sit and be quiet and talk into their microphones. So I am so happy to be talking to all of you out there. Happy weekend in the Sunshine State. We just love that we live in Florida and in Tampa Bay. We are proud to be in Tampa Bay and always bringing you the raw and real of life, business, and of course, real estate. 
so happy that Tampa Bay is really one of the number one metro markets in the country. We've become this massive tech hub. Jobs are flourishing. Traffic is getting a little crazy. We are raw and real on this show, although we are still welcoming everyone in as real estate is the name of the game on this show. And so we want as many people here as possible to enjoy the awesome melting pot that Tampa Bay provides, which is culture and diversity. And just we have so many amazing things in Tampa that we just allows us to flourish as well as going into St. Pete where we're building out these $54 million piers. We're creating outlets. And of course we love that we can be outside. So huge shout out to everyone back home in Illinois that just got snow again. As everyone knows, that's where I'm from. I love you all dearly, but I'm never moving back. And we would love to have you buy a vacation home here in Florida from Tony or Peter, who are amazing real estate agents on our show today, as well as Joe Pinkert, who could service all of your toilets and water heaters as he is, runs a plumbing company. So we're talking about character. These three guys have amazing character. I, I adore all three of them. I've been really grateful to get to know them. So we're going to talk about humility. So Peter, I'm coming to you. Define humility. To me, I mean, humility is... It's just, a tough one. Just It is a tough one. It's hard. You just put me right on the spot. But <laughs> like, it's simple. It's it, I go back to a high school football coach and it just sticks with me. And it's kind of character, humility, that side of it. It's doing the right thing when no one else is watching and continuing to do that over and over again and, and being humble enough to serve people, you know, that no matter what their stages in life or where they are, like, how can you serve them and help them? Because truthfully, like there are so many people in this world that we can help or like the person that you drive past, if you get this inkling or you get this message in your head that comes from somewhere else, pull over, you should pull over and help that person out. There's a reason that that thought came into your head and into your heart. I mean, I don't know, dude, winner, winner. Like if I had that air horn, mer, 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 like that's what it would be because I think that's a great answer. And I do think that's a hard definition. I actually threw it to you to define it because I was going to, and I realized I really couldn't. So then I just, I, I was, I was like throwing the ball to the right really quick. Just to him. We're, we're raw and real over here. That's, I was thinking, Tony, like, who's going to be the victim. You did an amazing job. I love that. And you know what I think is really hard in our industry right now is staying humble in our industry because sales is such a ride or die, cutthroat, have thick skin, save your tears for your pillow at home industry and so sometimes we have to take a step back right and we do deal with agents that maybe aren't so educated on the other side when we're listing we have buyers agents they write improper offers we have contractual agreements and our clients don't always like to to sign them we have to do right by our broker and follow compliance so when all of this is so cutthroat and then we close a deal we have barely any time to celebrate and we're right out hustling the next deal because we don't get a paycheck so to stay humble in that is really really tough and so, Tony, you have some longevity in this industry. Let's kind of talk about sellers a little bit and kind of relate that to being humble because we have a job to do. They want top dollar, but then it's like, hey, we need to clean up a little bit. Hey, we need to stage it right. Hey, we need to get good photos. And they're not always real cooperative, mm. right? No. So explain kind of how you stay humble because you do a lot of listing. So how do you stay humble in the listing process? You can talk about the clients. You can talk about buyer's agents. You can talk about all the things. Again, it just comes down to really finding out about them, right? You discover, ask questions about, you know, how long are you looking to, how long you want to sell this for? What's your, what's your end goal? You know, what do you really want to net out of here? Okay, look at your home. If you came in the home and you saw it look like this, would you buy it? Kind of really getting them to understand the, pro the sales process and how we're here to actually help them out and not just get a paycheck, but we want them to get top dollar, the most amount of money in the least amount of time. Okay, so here's going to be a million dollar question. Are you ready for this? No. So if you know that they are interviewing four agents, yes. do you like tell them the truth, even though they might not want to hear it? Or do you like stick with the whole cliche and kind of like over promise and under deliver? I want to tell them the truth, honestly, because because what comes down to it is if in the end, if they're going to hire another agent who's going to ask, who's going to say, hey, I'll list you your home for a million dollars and they sit on the market and and they come back to me because I've told them the truth. Hey, listen, I'm going to list your house for $500,000 because that's what it's worth. These are the comps. I'm not going to over deliver. I'm not going to overprice your home. I want to make sure that I'm telling them the real deal and I'll be front or all honest, upfront and honest with them. You know what I think is crazy about the world too is like, it's even like with kids, like kids really like structure. People like it when you're forthright and honest. I also try that reverse psychology approach. Like, well, I'm sure 
that Johnny has already told you X, Y, and Z, but like here's the facts to back it up. Houses are sitting on the market 36 days in your neighborhood. They're priced at $137 a square foot. So here's the range and we can price it a little high, but it's going to sit a little longer and we can price a little low. But here's what I'm going to do for you, which is what I really want to talk to the listeners about is really real estate is sold by market and price, not an agent. But what the agent does is the agent comes in and negotiates. The agent comes in and confirms that that's a solidified buyer. So you're not putting your stuff in a pod and it's all packed up, ready to go. And now we're down to the 11th hour and we don't close. So that's where I really want to come to you, Peter, with all of those sales skills, like negotiating, solidifying. So great. We make the pictures look good. We get on the market and we get offers. Now, what do you do to protect your seller remaining with humility, but what are we doing sure. to like be bulldogs in the game and protect those sellers out there with an offer that comes in? I mean, I think a key there is is communicating with the offers that you've gotten before you even present them, you know, to your seller of figuring out, okay, do these actually equate? Is one of these lenders actually better than another? Because sometimes you could say, wow, they're not putting very much down. They don't have a ton of stake in the game, but that may not actually be the best because they haven't been like fully vetted as a, like from the lender. And so getting into that side of it and providing that value on the negotiation piece too, it just comes into really like protecting your seller's best interests of what they, you know, what they want or what you're willing to move on. If that's, you know, some of the contingencies that you've put in place in the contract or, you know, that are presented to you of like, Hey, here's a reason why this one's actually better than the other one. I also want to speak to all of my sellers out there too that aren't really fan of like the VA FHA loan programs that we have out there. Like, let's have some humility. Like, veterans served our country, so we put them in a position to succeed in purchasing real estate. And all these sellers, you know, and these listing agents say, I'm not accepting a VA loan. Like, we were literally told the other day, like, I'm not accepting a VA loan. And it's funny, I hope Chris Doreen is listening with Chris Doreen Mortgage because I literally called the guy 15 times and he ended up taking our offer because I, I told him, I said, I'm like the wrong person to swipe on that you just swiped on a dating website and I'm just never going to go away. And he started <laughs> laughing. But but I want to talk about that because really in reality, like VA loans are, loans are so great because the, the appraisals are, are no different. Like you're not going to have a bad appraisal because, you know, they're going to price your home lower. That's not necessarily true. Like, yes, we need to pass like four point items, but you really need to do that on any purchase. But VA loans are great because the client doesn't need any money. They don't need to come to table with money. And going back to what you were saying, Peter, what's crazy is when you see these offers and people are putting all this money down, they have 30 days to go spend that. And I have seen some crazy stuff go on in that 30 day time frame. So again, don't judge a book by its cover. Have some humility when you're looking at all that. And to wrap this segment up, I'm going to come to you, Joe, for a second. So I, I, I think that what's crazy when you get on the investor calls and you talk to all these people about different things, the one thing is, is you're very clear in just staying like who you are. And I think that again, even in our industry, it's tough, right? I was out on the construction sites in, in the job trailers and we kind of had potty mouths and we like did all these things. So what do you do just to have humility? Like, what do you do when it gets to that place where we, we really think we're, we're hitting that threshold where the humility is going away? How do we bring it back in, in your service industry? Humility is hard. It's hard to be humble all the time, but I think that doing the right thing, a couple of things that the other gentleman said here, doing the right thing. And you, you touched on a little bit being authentic, not telling people that they want to hear what they don't want to hear. I mean, if you continue, it's something that's practiced. I think that doesn't come natural to anybody. I don't think we're not perfect. And I think it's important that <clears throat> we're aware of it, you know, because I think that if you're not aware of it, some people go through their whole lives and never are aware to be human, have be humble at all. And I met some of them. They're not around me. You know what I mean? So I think it's important to be aware of it and continue to practice to be more, more and more humble. Um, and it makes you feel good when, when you live that way. I, love I, that. I do other things. I do, th I do meetings. I'm around people that are at a different stage in their life than me. They're going through recovery. They're in their first week. You know what I mean? Or, or I'm around people that don't, they haven't hit a certain threshold in life of making money and stuff like that. And I think it's an enjoy to be around those people because it rem reminds you to stay humble. I love that. So. Could you give everyone your cell phone number, please? 813-340-9553. Thank you so much. And Mr. Tony Sicaro, if anybody wants that magazine, they want to know how to sell their home, they want an active marketing plan, give everyone your phone number so they can get a copy of that. Yeah, just text me, 813-758-3852. And Peter Carr, Master Negotiator, if anyone wants to know how they can buy a home right now in this market with a low interest rate, how can they contact you? Yeah, shoot me a text, send me a call, 513-253-9150. 
Loving this show today. We are talking all things character friends, raw and real of life, business, and real estate. If you missed one of our episodes or even the beginning of this show you can visit us on facebook at the lpt all-star radio show facebook page and when we come back we're going to wrap up character with courage we'll catch you after the break Welcome back to the LPT All-Star Radio Show. I am your host, Betsy Tinovan, LPT Realty and the Sunshine State Investments Team. Happy to be in the studio today. Three amazing guys. We've had a great show. We are bringing you the raw and real of life, business, and of course, real estate. Happy to bring you a show today on character. You know, I always have a little plan and a word, and we kind of imply that in our real estate game. We apply that with the business owners that are catalysts and connectors in the Tampa Bay community. We are so happy that LPT Realty and Robert Palmer allows us to put on this show and really just be that catalyst in bringing people together. So many relationships are made by the guests on the show, and then obviously with all of our listeners, they get million-dollar tips, tricks, and gems from business owners, real estate agents, and obviously just amazing people that are doing great things in Tampa. So all things character today, we we whipped out some self-management, some authenticity, humility, and now we're going to wrap up the show on courage. So Tony Sicaro, real estate guru, been in the game quite a while, just brought himself over to LPT Realty. I had to hustle hard for that one. He was a hot commodity. And Peter Carr, super bright light, amazing sales history, was in software sales over a decade, took a plunge into real estate. He's a huge asset to the real estate game. And Joe Pinkert, a replay on our show who has been on once before apex plumbing all your plumbing needs also super plugged in in the recovery community now a real estate investor happy to have all these guys here so we'll start with joe because he's the hardest to control so we'll we'll ask (laughs) him we'll ask him and put him on the spotlight for all i want from you joe is the definition of courage the definition of courage i think that being in uncharted territory and continuing to move forward so when you don't know exactly what to do, having the courage to continue to keep moving forward. You guys have killed my definitions. Like, you've crushed them. <laughs> like, Tony crushed it. Peter crushed it. You just crushed it. Can you guys get a wrong answer or no? No wrong <laughs> I got a lot of them. Don't worry. <laughs> if you keep talking, you'll catch them. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, I love that. So what I really love that you said is you took them to the place of being uncomfortable. And then you're like, all right, what are we going to do? So if you move forward, that means you have courage. Yes. Okay, cool. I love that. That was great. You're a winner. Ding, ding, ding. If I had the little clappy nose, it'd be like, ah. (laughs) Okay, so that's great. I love that. So let's talk business now. One more question for you, Joe. So in the business world, we went through COVID. We had all these horrible things happening. Now we're in a huge recession. So right or wrong or there are other, I'm, I'm not telling everyone the world is ending because I'm. we're all doing fine. We're breathing. We're thinking we are all profiting. Real estate's still great. However, we are in the moments where we have to spend $9 on milk. We have to spend $5 on gas. And then as business owners, we're really supposed to take 20% of our profits and put that into marketing. So how do you just maintain the courage? Like after COVID, then going through everything, you just got hit with a huge insurance upgrade. Like how do you, do you find that strength and courage in your business? Well, I'm, I I will share my faith a little bit, but I lean on God a lot. You know, that's a big thing for me. He gives you courage, right? When When you don't have the courage from within, you know, I lean on, you know, my higher power. I think that is, it's vital because it gives you strength that you didn't think you had. And to talk into how everything's going up in this economy and, you know, I have employees. I care about them and their families. I, I consider that in every decision that I make. They have to buy milk every day, you know, and, and now I have to talk to, now, now I also think about my customers and I have to charge them more money so they can pay my guys more money. And insurance goes up because guess what? They need to charge more so they can pay their people more. So these, I'm kind of in the crosshairs of all this. One thing that is very good is in the plumbing world, you're always going to need plumbing. So I love that I'm in a business. Everybody that, poops, right? It, and it clocks. <laughs> Everybody That's poops. That's Love that. Every, everybody does their dishes. <laughs> yes. So, so, it, so I guess Tony and Peter, what he, where he's going with this is, we don't know what's going to happen to us, right? You know, but since everyone poops and washes dishes, Joe's good. Okay, Joe. I got you. Thanks, buddy. Yes, I know it's a. 
the plumbing industry is pretty concrete. I, I love that you said that. But I also think that like for you, it's like having that support system to be continued going forward in the moments that suck. Yes, right? I want to I talk about that too. I, I surround myself with people that are very supportive of me. Investor has been huge. You know, we get on that, you know, we get on that call and we talk to each other often to support each other. I also go to to meetings. You know, so I I have mentors in those meetings. I also have a business coach that's a mentor to me. You know, so I I find people that have went through situations that I have not went through yet, and I pit and I bury them around me so that they can carry me to the next spot. You know, because I'm not this highly educated person. And guess what? If it goes to another employee, I don't really know how to do things at this point. You know, so I get other people that are that have experience in those areas and put them around me. That's why I love I re that. recovery. I get somebody in recovery, running a business. I find somebody that's in business. Love that. An expert in every field. In my faith. I find somebody in faith. So love that. Yeah. That's great. And so Tony, you've been around the real estate game for a while. So it's funny, I think Peter mentioned this earlier, that really in reality, people think that interest rates are so high right now and things are so bad right now, but this is not 2008. So I think we're a little, a little over, overzealous. I think we exaggerate a little bit, like stay off the news, mm -hmm. watch, watch solidified information. Like if you're going to read anything, maybe read the Wall Street Journal, you know, get some concrete answers. Let's not scroll through Instagram or TikTok and go, the world's going to end. But talk about that courage. Like why stay in the real estate game? You know, why encourage people to buy a home? Like why say all those things right now in the market today? Because it's always a great time to buy real estate. There's never a bad time to buy real estate. Interest rates may be high, but let's think, let's talk about it. Let's think about it. Interest rates will be high, but they won't be interest. They won't be high forever, right? Eventually, they're gonna come down. And what can you do? You can refinance. So stick in the game, stick with it. Buy now, always buy now, because you'll always be able to refinance later, and and you'll get out of that situation. So, real estate is one of the sexiest assets in America. I mean, just kind of like Joe was saying, I mean, obviously I was being candid and being funny. Everyone washes their dishes. Everyone goes to the bathroom. Everyone needs a place to live. So whether they are living in a tiny home, a container home, a mobile home, building a home, a mansion, a luxury, whatever, you have to have a place to sleep at night. Unless you're going to sleep in a tent, which I have thought about doing. But that would probably be a bad idea. So I, I, I wouldn't do the bugs in like five minutes. Temporarily. So because everyone needs that, you know, we were actually named essential employees during COVID which is crazy. Why, why stay in the game this long? What do you love about it? I just love, well, one, it's, and the money's great, right? But really, really when you meet with a client and you, and you either buy a home for them or you help you sell it their home, just the end process, it's, it's, a, it's a grueling process sometimes. It can be. A lot of avenues that come up, a lot of things, obstacles that, that pop up, but when they're sitting at the closing table and they're either getting that check or they're buying their new home, you see their face and it's just, they're so relieved and so happy that, you know, it feels good inside that you help someone achieve their goal. Love that. I'm coming to my guy, Peter Carr, to wrap the show up today. So final thoughts, Peter, when it comes to courage, I'm going to kind of let you release whatever you want to release. You're the final thought guy. Final thoughts on courage. What do you got for the listeners well, out there? Thanks for making me the closer. I, like, I appreciate that. You know, bringing, <laughs> bringing in the, the righty. I mean, I'm not a lefty. I just have my left. Everyone on our <laughs> team even, is a closer. Don't right? know why, you know, on that side of it. But no, I think like both the guys, both Joe and Tony, like really hit it, you know, there in terms of courage. And even me, you could be like, why did you switch into real estate, mm. go into it full time during what the news would project as doom and gloom, the worst time ever. People are moving. People are still relocating from New York, New Jersey, the Midwest, California. And those are the people I want to help. I want you to have the same experience I had buying my first home that like, I want to buy or sell your home the same way that I, like I would do it for myself. And that's the service that I want to give. That's the courage that like, I want to have, you know, every day just for clients on that side of things. I love that. That's absolutely amazing. And anyone out there listening that is a first time home buyer or has not purchased a home in the past three years, Tony and Peter will definitely be helping all of our first time home buyers at a first time home buyer class where you will get a certificate and be able to get a grant for ten to twenty five thousand dollars. We have a client right now pre approved coming to the table with only one thousand and nine dollars on his closing. If you want information about that class, you can reach out to me at 813-609-0229. And we love first time home buyers, right, Peter? We love them. 
Absolutely. It is amazing to see them like purchase their first home and accomplish that goal, like you were saying, Tony. And I think there's a lot of resources out there. They're not just grants, but there's bond programs and there's specific programs for Hillsborough County, Pinellas County. And a lot of people are uneducated, uneducated and just don't know about them. So we would love for you guys to come in, sit down in the class, you know, meet with Tony and Peter, have them walk you through the first steps of home buying. And I always tell people, it's not if you're going to get pre-approved, it's when. We may have to take a couple steps to get you there, but we will walk you through the finish line, whether that is tomorrow or six months months or a year down the road. And again, my number is 813-609-0229. Give me a text and we'll get you signed up. Thank all of you guys for being here today. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I, I love it, this. I love this. I love this. This is a great show. Great gems for people. Peter Carr, if someone wants the Homebuyer Magazine, they want to come to the first time Homebuyer class, they want to talk all things real estate, give those digits out. Yeah, sure. Shoot me a text. Give me a call. Whatever's easier for you. 513 513- Two five three nine one five zero. And Tony Sicaro, I'm so glad that I hustled you for so long. You were worth the wait, buddy. I hope so. I love that. I'm so glad to have you on our team. You're an amazing guy and just a great salesperson. So if somebody wants that active marketing plan, they want to see your new listing power pack, they want to also come to the first time home buyer class, give those digits out. Yeah, just call or text 813-758-3852. Joe, I love you, man. I just got to end with that. Can you give everyone your cell phone number? 813-340-9553. Happy to be with you guys this weekend. Unfortunately, we have come to an end. Catch out us on the LPT All-Star Facebook page. Download the iHeartRadio app, and we'll see you next weekend. Thanks for listening to the Raw and Real of Real Estate podcast. Powered by LPT Realty. Real estate reimagined. We hope this episode motivated and inspired you. And don't forget to rate and review us. Thanks again for listening to the Raw and Real of Real Estate podcast with Betsy Tenervin.